Steps in English, Students Book One, by Tim Fowler, Paul Davis, Sylvia Wielden, Paul Shipton, and Eva Paljack. Published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2011. This session is devoted to our new course, which is called Steps in English, and I'm going to talk about a new approach to teaching drama. First, I would like you to have a look at this quotation: "He will never achieve anything," and this is a real quotation from some Buddhist school reports. And this is a very famous person and a very intelligent. Albert Einstein, one of the most intelligent people of the 20th century. Why do you think teachers did not recognize that? They didn't know. They probably thought he was stupid. Some people say he had dyslexia. But have a look at this classroom. Maybe it was the fault of the conventional teaching that was going on. At the times of Albert Einstein, today we are going to talk about using senses when teaching. Look at this classroom. Can you tell me which senses were primarily used in this conventional classroom? The sight, and also they had to listen to the teacher, so they used their hearing. Only those two senses were used in the classroom. Remembering that Albert Einstein could not learn anything at school, maybe it was the fault of his teachers that they couldn't get the interest of such an intelligent person. Could you have a look at this quotation? This is one of my favorite quotations as far as English teaching is concerned, and I think it's worth considering. If we don't learn the way you teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. So today we are going to think about it: how to teach our children effectively. Is there a one teaching style, or maybe we should adopt it to the needs of our students? Now I'm going to give you an exercise. You will have to do something. Have a look at this word, green sandpiper. This is a name of something in English. Do you know what it is? Listen to this sound now. Have a look at two words and tell me what do you think it is. Any guesses? So, a bird. Somebody said. Oh, maybe chicks. Any other ideas? Okay, who's right? I will show you. What's the answer? So this is a type of bird, and the Polish word is samotnik. Okay. So now we have used the sense of hearing. Now let's. Try another sense. Have a look at the screen. What you have to do is to draw something on your partner's back. Listen to the sound and draw it on your partner's back. Draw it. What was it? Storm, thunder. You are right. And now, for those of you who love beautiful pictures, have a look at this. Beautiful, isn't it? Let's summarize. Which senses have we involved? Which senses have we used? Hearing, sight, and the sense of touch. Now, my question is: Which senses helped you? Which senses did you feel comfortable with? And which senses, which sensations frustrated you? Probably some of you preferred what you saw. Some of you preferred what you heard, and some of you liked the feeling of somebody else touching you. Have a look at this scan from my school notebook. This is my English notebook, English lesson, and. What we were doing then was learning about simple past, taking into consideration the fact that children usually learn different things by using different senses. What do you think was the result of my learning simple past? Did I learn anything? No. This is just a set of rules. So, as you can see, in the conventional classroom, those two worlds do not meet. The real world, in which children 
learn using all the senses and the world of the conventional classroom where only two senses are used. Yes, sight and hearing. That represents the conventional classroom. And now, this is multi-sensory teaching, all the senses. Maybe not all of them, because we are not talking about the, the sense of taste. It would be difficult to use it during a lesson, although you may try. Or smell. Sometimes it can help us. If you bring something smelly into the classroom, the children will definitely remember that. Because we remember all the powerful stimuli. Okay, in fact, multisensory teaching is the combination of three senses. This is the sense of hearing, sight, and the sense of touch. In this session, we are going to learn about multisensory approach. We are going to discuss some multisensory techniques, and we are going to discuss some multisensory strategies when teaching and learning drama which will make our teaching of drama more powerful. We have differentiated four different types of learners. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and tactile. And this is an interesting piece of information. Have a look at that. Children enter kindergarten as kinesthetic and tactual learners, moving and touching everything as they learn. By second or third grade, some students have become visual learners. During the late elementary years, some students, primarily females, become auditory learners, especially females. And many other adults, especially males, maintain kinesthetic and textual strengths throughout their lives. Maybe that's why they are better at assembling furniture. And we don't often do it, but they do. We must remember that one teaching style does not fit all learning styles. If we've got one teaching style, and four different learning styles, it's not possible, simply. On the basis of what you know, what you have heard, could you please guess what kind of techniques they are? Are they visual, are they auditory, tactile at the top and at the bottom, kinesthetic? The first one is student creating art and images, visual. Although if you said tactile, I think you are also right. Modeling materials, Tactile. Use of color for highlighting. Visual. Games involving clapping. Kinesthetic. Yes, because that involves, you know, the whole body movement probably, not only fingers. And the research shows that combining all those kinds of inputs brings the best results. So, when teaching, let's always think about all those kinds of inputs. Have a look at this slide. Multisensory techniques are important because they enable students to use their personal areas of strength to help them. Each student has got a different strength. We call it a different learning style. And another reason, they provide the key to teaching students with learning disabilities, with dyslexia especially. There are lots of students with dyslexia now. Because when using different senses, different pathways in the brain are activated and sometimes those stronger senses will have the weaker senses that's why it is much better for dyslexia students to learn and now we'll try to think about creating our own multi-sensory lesson first you have to decide what you want to teach them yes and what they want to learn so let's set some goals for teaching and then if you have set the goal for example, present perfect will be our goal. Let's think about different channels. Let's think about some auditory activities. Let's think about some visual activities. And let's think about some kinesthetic and tactile activities. Just to show you an example, I will teach you something using multisensory approach. I will ask you to have a look at the picture and do some predicting, pre-listening activity. So can you predict what the dialogue is going to be about? About food. Can you guess which language we are going to learn? So the guess is that we are going to talk about food. Are we right? Can you listen? Alright, which language are we learning? Japanese. Okay. What, what were they talking about? Did you guess? No, this probably doesn't give you any clue. How about phonetic transcription? No clue. 
How about translation? Do you like the taste? Yes, it's delicious. So now we are going to learn it's delicious in Japanese. That's the phonetic transcription. And of course, we'll listen to it and repeat. Totemo oishii desu. Can you repeat? Okay, now let's add some movement. Okay, so what you are going to do now is to repeat the phrase again, this time stroking your tummy like that because it is so delicious. So once again, Totemo oishii desu. Totemo oishii desu. So We've got two senses now. Let's add something visual. Beautiful. Yes, very tasty, isn't it? Okay. So now, once again, we have listened to it. We have made some movements. And we've got a nice visual, which will make us remember the expression better. And now, let's try to do some grammar activities in our English classroom. As you can see, grammar can be taught in that way. What I'm going to do now, what I meant to ask you, was to prepare some flashcards. But I have made them for you. Okay, so I'm going to give them to a couple of people. Normally in class, you would ask students to prepare something like that. Can you just take it? Just a simple activity from the book. What the students are going to do is to read the text. Actually, I'm going to read it to you. And all the students in the class are going to put them up if they think they've got the correct word. That will involve the movement. So I'm reading, when I come to the blank, you will have to put your flashcards up. We aren't in Emma's bedroom and we aren't. Yes, yeah, so all those people with aren't put it up. We are in the kitchen. Emma, Jack and Luke, they are at school. Willie is on the chair. I'm not on the chair. Okay, my favorite food isn't pizza. My favorite food is cheese. So we've got a lot of movement. And now let's add something visual. And this is a picture. <coughs> Students will remember better when they see this funny picture. They look at the text, they listen to it, and they make this movement. Have a look at those two sentences. Where's the book? Can you complete it? It's on the floor. Where is the bag? It's at the door, near the door. That's the answer. Because this exercise has been taken from uh, the course book, from steps. Where is the book? It's on the floor. Where is the bag? It's near the door. And the instruction says that you have to repeat those questions and answers and clap your hands in the rhythm. And this is actually what I will ask my students to do. Like this. Where's the book? It's on the floor. Where's the bag? It's near the door. Okay, and now I will ask them to look at this picture and ask them those questions. And they have to answer, clapping their hands like that. I will try. You have to look at the picture and find the object. Where's the bin? <laughs> Where's the TV? On the shelf. Where is the school bag? Yeah, and we have to pay attention to that so that they clap, right? It's near the door. It's near the desk. It's under somewhere. A simple activity that will involve movement, the sense of touch, and they will also focus on that. So the chance is that they will not be talking about something else. A song. All the three learners will benefit from the songs, but generally speaking, all the children like songs. And now, how can we involve uh, the three senses? The first activity that we'll have to do is to predict where the words go. Okay, let's try to do it. He always runs, he never walks. He never listens, he always talks. He often plays football. He often takes or has, yes, because we've got has, has the shower, and so on and so forth. And now we are going to listen to the song and check the answers. For students, it will be enough. And now we are listening to the song once again, and this time we will ask them to show different activities. So let's do a kind of a pantomime. When you hear walks, let's do something like that. 
When you hear talks with gesture, yes, something like that. Play football would be difficult, but if they stand up, we can do something. It may get noisy. They don't have to show everything. Maybe let's show has a shower, like this. Okay, so let's try. The chance is that they will remember better because they have listened to it and then have made those movements. In steps, grammar is introduced with robot whose name is Clunker. And it is the robot is funny. He makes funny noises. That's why children might like them. Grammar for them is something boring, something difficult. So let's make it fun. Listen to the recording and I will ask you at the end what pads do they have. CD2, track 27. Listen and read. Clanker the robot. One. Oh, ben has got a rabbit and Nicky has got a cat. I haven't got a pet. Two. <gasps> Wait, what's that? Three. Oh, hi, Ben. I'm at the park. I've got a new pet. It's a dog. It's got a long nose and short legs. Great! Four. But then... There's a problem at the zoo. The crocodile isn't there. Oh! Five. My new pet has got a long tail and very big teeth. It hasn't got fur, but it's got... <gasps> oh, no! Come on, Nicky! <laughs> Six. <gasps> you haven't got a new dog, Clanker. It's the crocodile from the zoo! <laughs> oh, ah, um, uh, sit, boy, sit! Oh! So, the answer is easy. They thought it was a dog. dog at the beginning, but then it turned out it was a crocodile. Okay, so we have listened to the story with those funny noises which children may like. And now, what's the follow-up? Have a look at those four sentences. The structure practice here is what? Have got. So now in this exercise eight, we've got four sentences. And I will ask two people to complete those sentences, but I want you to make a mistake in one of your sentences. Could you take the first two sentences? In one of them, you have to make a mistake. And now my class, listen what you have to do, because your task is to decide if the sentences are correct or not. If the sentence is not correct, you have to stamp your feet, everyone. Stamp your feet. If the answer is wrong, you have to say boo, all right? If I say crocodiles has got short legs, you will say boo, right? So again, we have involved some movement instead of traditional true, false, right, wrong, and so on. And the last thing in our class is homework. Do you think it is possible to set some multisensory homework? Difficult, but have a look at the workbook, the scan of the workbook of steps. What the students are going to do at home is to read the story, but we can make it multisensory, add some listening, because the workbook has got the CD. So we can ask the students to read the story and also listen to the CD. Do you think they will do it at home? Maybe some of them. What else do we have? Steps is accompanied by iTools. iTools is interactive board software. Interactive whiteboard uh, software is very good for tactile learners because they may approach the screen, touch everything. Besides grammar, in the Steps iTools is presented in a multisensory way. And this will help the learners. One more thing, if we are talking about the package for, for the teachers, I distributed those handmade flashcards. But we've got something which is really great. They're called grammar flashcards. There are also vocabulary flashcards. 
accompanying steps. But we've got ready-made grammar flashcards. And this is for steps one and for steps two. You just cut them and you've got ready-made grammar flashcards. Let's summarize now. Multisensory approach on teaching and learning grammar. What are the benefits for the students? Support. All the types of learners are supported. Motivation. I think it is funnier for them to use the movement and so on, so they are better motivated. And you can focus their attention on yourselves. For the teacher, creativity. The lesson is generally, I think, more creative when you use the dif different senses. Variety and satisfaction because your children know grammar well. And fun. Last but not least, a lot of fun with all those gestures being performed in the classroom. How much we remember? Have a look. We remember only 20% of what we read. We remember only 30% of what we hear, 40% of what we see, 50% of what we say, 60% of, of what we do, and how about see, hear, say and do? If you combine all, this is 90%. That's why it is so important to involve all the senses. The last thing, and I would like you to take it home with you, tell me and I will forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. So please remember that and when preparing your grammar lessons, try to think about all those senses that we have talked about. And I hope that the course steps will help you with that because the authors have always thought about different senses. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you.